Okay, Sarah, thanks very much. Well, of course, we were talking about last night's debate there, Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, both taking part with those televised questions. Both were forced onto rocky ground by an audience that was able to put them under pressure. Is Labour's manifesto a realistic wish list, or is it just a letter to Santa Claus? <laughs> I urge you to read it. I think it is a serious and realistic document that addresses the issues that many people in this country face. And we've been brave enough to put it out there with all the policies that are in it how we deal with the school funding crisis, how we make sure preschool all children, two to four, get 30 hours childcare per week or opportunities for preschool play and education, how we bring back the educational maintenance allowance so that youngsters who would be deterred from staying on at school or going on to get A-levels or other qualifications and that those who can get into university won't end up with debts of 50 or 60,000 at the end of it. You called the election for, for your own political gains. It's nothing to do with good, good of the country. It's for your own political gains. No, it's not, sir. Can I just say to you, as I've just said, it would have been the easiest thing in the world for me, having become Prime Minister after the referendum when David Cameron resigned, to say, you know, the ne next election's not till 2020. Um, I, you know, this, this is a good job. I enjoy doing this job. I want to do, in this job, I do what I believe is the best for Britain. I could have stayed on doing that job for another couple of years and your, not called your an election. Your party called the, I had the European call referendum an for, for the good of the Conservative Party. You've called a general election for the good of the Conservative Party and it's going to backfire on you. No, I called... Well, it got pretty heated, didn't it? We're joined now by Katie Balls, the political correspondent at The Spectator, and Kevin Maguire, associate editor of The Daily Mirror. Starting with you then, Kevin, who fared best? Well, the audience were brilliant and asked all the questions they, they should. Theresa May may have steadied the Tory ship after she's been on the slide and been falling for some time, but she's very defensive now, while Jeremy Corbyn is doing better than was ever expected, and he's got the momentum. She struggled on schools, hospitals, defending a government record, while he was under sustained fire on Trident, where you could see that he was in some trouble because he didn't really want to answer the question directly, which would, would he ever press the button and incinerate millions of people? No, he wouldn't. Now, I think that's reassuring, but nevertheless, he lost a debate within his own party, and he may be losing that bit of the debate in the country. And he is closing the gap, as you say. Mm. Is that partly due to the campaigns that are being run by both parties? Yeah, I think the Labour campaign has been a lot more positive than the Conservative mm. campaign. But last night, Theresa May managed to finally have a much more positive tone to her speaking. And I think that paid off. And I think, actually, the format worked against Jeremy Corbyn to some way. I thought Jeremy Corbyn would thrive with audience questions, but it meant he couldn't avoid questions he didn't like. And on Trident, he tried to change the topic, and then the audience didn't like that, so they just kept going for him, and it meant he got hammered on the fence. It's interesting, isn't it? Because, I mean, I've been on part of the campaign trail, saw Jeremy Corbyn in Bristol. He was seen, you know, sitting on the floor with kids, reading them books. We haven't really seen that natural side of Theresa May, have we? I don't think there really is one. <laughs> I, think, I think she's very buttoned up, not a great personality. Uh, she doesn't really like interacting, not very emotional. While he is very relaxed in his skin, confident of his views, he can mix and engage, and that's where he is at home. But she people say they don't believe that he could be a leader and get us this best deal for Brexit. Yeah, far fewer people think that now than at the beginning, because they see Corbyn uncut rather than a caricature that was presented to them in the, in the past, which is why he's closing the gap, the personal gap on her, as well as the part he's closing it to. Whether it's too late and he hasn't had enough time is a, another issue, because we're only a few days from polling on Thursday, but people like the Corbyn they see while she has been falling. And they, you know, she, they were presented with her as some great figure, but it's rather like the end of uh, you know, the, you know, the Wizard of Oz and you pull back the curtain. There's not a great powerful wizard, there's a little timorous beast. 
But I think Corbyn's credibility issue was underlined last night when we saw the clip when, uh, you know, an audience member said to him, is Labour's manifesto basically a letter to Santa? And I don't think he would have eased people's concerns when things are brought up on, you know, how small businesses would cope with the raise to the wage. And I don't, I don't think he really conquered that. So I think Theresa May has prided herself on being a bloody difficult woman. And she's had to learn that actually she does need to show a more personable side. But Corbyn, in a way, he's very likeable. But do people trust him with the economy? Me. Yeah, apologies uh, for the language there. Um, also, mentioning, of course, Jeremy Corbyn, he's been under a lot of pressure for some time. If he loses, does he have to go? I think whoever loses would have to go. If she loses, she has to go. If he loses, he has to go. I think that's the, you know, the best way for both parties to move on. And how much damage does she do on Wednesday night with that no-show? Um, I think lots of people didn't like that she wasn't there, and I can completely see why. I also think that debate, though, with seven people was very chaotic, and it probably helped the Tories' line of a coalition of chaos, because you didn't really seem to hear much, and there was lots of shouting over each other. Everyone ganged up on Amber Rudd, which probably worked to Rudd's favour, because it looked like she was being picked on. Two years ago, David Cameron did a seven-way debate, uh, and he sailed through it quite serenely. I think the fact she wouldn't go there, she won't debate head to head. I think you know, people can see that. She's not as confident in her views and her position as she pretends. And she's been, come on, she's been found out in this election. That is, that is the truth. She started with a, a much bigger figure. She ends shrunken. He started out as somebody who was smeared and, uh, and abused, and people think better of him. He's gone up, she's gone down. And she was asked last night, wasn't she, whether she regrets calling this snap election. She said no, but of course, uh, one lady said, well, you're, you're going back on so many promises, mm. especially social care. I think even if the Tories come home with a very comfortable majority, there's no denying that Theresa May's authority within her own party has been weakened. The Tories blame things like the dementia tax U-turn, her comments on fox hunting, as reasons their lead has fallen. And that means that her personal brand, which was a very high point, has, is really dented from this election. So if you were on Theresa May's campaign, mm. uh, what would you be advising her to do in the final few days? You know, five days left. Oh, I think as they're doing now, you would Brexit, Brexit, Brexit. The days of her going after the Labour vote is gone. She's now trying to keep the UKIP uh, switches. So you go on Brexit and they will turn their guns and smear Jeremy Corbyn. It's understandable. Politics is a dirty game. Uh, they'll play very dirty. They've got Linton Crosby, who's probably the dirtiest strategist of the ball. You know what they'll do. It, it, may, it may not be great, uh, you know, worthy politics, but it might work for them. Do you think she's panicking? I think lots of people thought she would be panicking, and I think some Tories are a bit worried, but last night's performance is very assured, and it did not look like a Prime Minister who thought it was her last week in number 10. And, of course, Jeremy Corbyn last night uh, being criticised for his stance on nuclear weapons. Yeah. Always going to be a difficult area for him because he lost the debate within his own party. He didn't want Trident renewal to go ahead. Probably the other country seems to back Trident over, overall. It matters to uh, quite a few people. that it, it's, a, it's a weak spot for him. Now, I, I really prefer leaders who wouldn't mass incinerate millions of people. I think we should be worried about those who press the button and do it. But nevertheless, it's a, it's a tricky issue for him because he, his party is somewhere he isn't. He's done a lot better than people thought he would do at the start of this campaign, hasn't he? Oh, most definitely, but expectations were very, very low. And uh, let's, let's be honest, his leadership hadn't been great for, for 18 months. And he's come performing because he is a campaigner. And he can stand up, he knows what he's going to say, because he's believed essentially the same, you know, he's had the same values, the same policies for a long time. And people quite like that. While you can see Theresa May thinking all the time, what have I been told to say? What, where am I supposed to position myself? How must I attack my opponent? One of his weaknesses, I think, and he, he gets some votes for it, is he doesn't make it personal. She attacks him all the time. He never attacks her personally. And I, think that's, uh, I think that's a mistake. OK, thanks very much, both of you, uh, for joining us. Interesting thoughts there. And over the past few weeks, 